Welcome to LAPSCU's webinar titled Budgeting 101. My name is Myra Kasuk and I am the Financial Education Coordinator here at Los Angeles Police Federal Credit Union. This webinar is scheduled to go for one hour including questions and is being recorded. This is an interactive presentation that at times requires participation in the form of you either raising your hand during a question portion and are asking questions at the end of the presentation. For those of you attending a webinar for the first time, please allow me to draw your attention to the GoToWebinar toolbar. This is the toolbar that was launched when you joined the presentation. Um, to the left of the toolbar, you will notice that there are four icons. The fourth icon should um, resemble a hand and an upward green arrow. Please click on the hand icon once you locate it to let me know that you all see that icon. Perfect. Great. Okay. This again is an interactive presentation and I will ask for your participation at times. Also, if you have a question directly below the, you have two um, panes in your toolbar. Um, directly below the audio pane, you should see an area that states questions. Click on the plus sign to the left of the questions pane and type, I see it. Okay, thank you. I see uh, one person so far. Um, again, it's the pane within that toolbar. You'll see audio. Thank you. And I see a couple of people starting to type in now as well. Click on the plus sign to the left of the questions pane. That'll open up the questions grid and just type in, I see it. If you are using a mobile device, it will just be a question mark and simply use your keyboard as if you were sending a text. Okay, so I see a couple of more coming in as well. I'll just give it just a little bit more time um, to make sure that everybody can see that. If you have not typed that in yet, just simply go ahead and type in, I see it. Okay, I have one that does not see a, a question pane. Um, for the person that I do have, there's at least one person that does not see it. Um, I will have an opportunity for you to also share your questions if for some reason it's not showing on your system. Um, what I'll have you do uh, towards the end as well is just simply write down your questions. And I will um, provide some additional assistance when we send out the survey for you to submit your questions if they have not already been answered um, within the presentation. In the essence of time, all questions will be addressed at the end of tonight's webinar, as many of your concerns might be already addressed within the presentation itself. Now, if you are anything like me, you might sometimes lose your train of thought and or maybe uh, your question pane for whatever reason is not working for you on the system that you're using. Um, at, if that's the case, um, again, I will open up uh, the floor again towards the end, and I will also send out a survey that will give you the opportunity to address your questions if they were not answered within the presentation itself. Budgeting uh, is perhaps the best way to save and spend more wisely. Um, tonight we'll explore positive financial habits to help you stay on track as well as to get a handle on your finances. We're going to do this by providing some tips on how to take control of your financial situation, calculating your net worth, as well as how to create a budget and monitor your progress. In addition, you will learn some valuable ways to manage the flow of your income and expenses by keeping a record of the money you spend during a one-month period. So you'll ask yourself things such as what patterns can you see in your spending habits. How do you decide what to purchase and what factors influence your purchase decision? We will also do, um, I'll talk to you a little bit about some comparison shopping and we can help each other out with also sharing some things that you have used in the past in order to shop better. Okay.
Okay, so let's go ahead and get some practice with that hand tool. By a show of hands, how many of you truly understand your financial situation? Um, and actually, let me rephrase that a little bit. How many of you find yourself going with friends to eat at, let's say, Fleming's when your pocket is screaming Denny's? Okay. So I see I'm not alone in this. Thank you. A few of you raised your hand. Um, so I want you to ask yourself, does, my, does your current financial situation cover enough to take care of all of your expenses? And do you have enough currently saved to contribute to your savings, as well as will you be able to pay for health insurance if you retire? And if not, how much do you think you will need? Um, all of these questions, as well as one that a lot of people forget, and I almost did, is how much money will you receive from Social Security? The reason why I'm asking you to think about these things is because in order to determine and truly understand your current financial situation, you will need to create a budget before you can make an informed decision. But how can you budget if you don't truly understand what your net worth is. Net worth is your assets minus liabilities. And in the simplest terms, it basically means what you own minus what you owe. So first I want you to think about, and if you have a piece of paper in front of you, this is a nice little exercise. Um, we're not going to share the answers, but it kind of gets you to thinking about uh, what your net worth is. First, you will need to make two lists and get a calculator. I don't need you to go and, and get a calculator during the webinar, but these are some items you will need. The first list will include everything you own that has any type of significant value. So, for example, um, any cash you have in checking, savings, um, if your home is paid off, the value of your home, investment, stocks, you know, you kind of get the picture of where I'm going with this. These items are known as your assets. The second list will include your debts, and these are things that you owe. So your mortgage, um, any other loans that you have out there, so car loans, things like that, any taxes that you still have left that are unpaid. Let's call this the list of your liabilities. So what you will do in order to find out what your net worth is, is you're going to find the total sum of each individual list. Okay, so you'll have your list of your assets, get a total for that, and a list of your liabilities. You'll get a total from that, and then you are going to subtract your total assets from the total amount of debt. The resulting number is what would be your net worth. So once you calculate this and you get your net worth, you're either going to come up with a positive or a negative number. If the number displayed in your net worth is a positive number, um, it means you have a surplus of money. And this is a good thing because it means you are on the right track, first off, and you're ahead of the game as you have enough income to pay your debts and you still have money left over. So that's why it's really good if that number comes up as positive. If the number, however, displayed is a negative number, it means you are living beyond your means. You are either falling behind, as not only do you not have enough money to pay your debts, but even if you were to continue to borrow funds, if you can't pay them back, you are also then damaging credit. So. What are some things that you can do to uh, increase your net worth? So when you think of that, your net worth will increase every time you either increase an asset or decrease a liability. And creating a budget can help you focus on cutting back on spending and assist you with paying off those debts. So um, first thing I want you to do is start off by identifying all of your take-home pay. And this is the net shown on your paycheck for those of you that are working. Um, 
or any supplemental income. So it could be uh, interest, uh, rental income, if you have any rental properties, retirement, investment, um, even side jobs, you're going to you're going to look at those and consider those, and you're looking at all of your take-home pay. And again, you want to look at your net. Next, you want to calculate your monthly expenses. So again, those taxes, rent, mortgage. Uh, if you have any child support that you're paying, insurance, anything like that. Based on the number displayed when you calculated your net worth what is the goal needed for you to have a surplus? So if you had a negative number, you're going to look at that and say, and look and see how much would you have needed in order to make that a surplus. And that's that positive number that you should have had displayed when we did the calculation a few slides earlier. For those of you that wish to push yourselves um, a bit further, you can even look at this as how can you increase the money that you have in a surplus. Um, and these are things like uh, setting a goal for yourself. So you're going to place your budgeting goals in categories. For example, uh, grocery budget, gas budget, entertainment, etc. Now, if your math is not your favorite subject, which for me, I'm going to be honest with you, math completely makes me dizzy when I think about it. Um, but if math is not your favorite subject and you think you could use some help, or if you just want to double check what you came up with, we have something new just for you. Our newest vendor, Coffee, has some great tools to assist you in managing your money wisely. Now, Coffee stands for Knowledge of Financial Education. And it was created by Consolidated Credit, which is a 25-year-old national nonprofit credit counseling agency. Now, it's important for me to note that Coffee is not insured by the NCUA or any other governmental agency. It's also not a credit union guarantee and is not a deposit or a condition to any banking service or activity. What Coffee is, however, um, is a service that provides coaching and educational instruction services for consumers by using online tools and personal interaction. Um, some of their tools are include, but they're not actually limited to, building a budget, as well as maximizing your financial future. Okay. And I have one moment, please. I have a person that is unable to hear any of the um, any of the presentation, so I'll need to reach out to that individual um, separately. Um, you can also get access. Um, you can also access the coffee website from the LAPFCU homepage, or simply by typing in the URL address shown on the slide. Now, coffee has over 100 financial education videos and more than 30 publications that you can download. So you can actually save these items as a PDF and you can look at it on your own time as well. Um, in addition, they provide free financial coaches which are available to assist you with questions on how to uh, pull your credit report as well as tips on how to get the repair process started. Um, and again, keep in mind financial coaching isn't just for those with credit concerns. It's also for those looking for tools to stay on track and as well as manage their money wisely. To access coffee from our website, you're simply going to access www.lapfcu.org, which I'm hoping all of you are all too familiar with since um, this is your institution and hover over the services and resources heading, um, which will then display the options available for that category. You're then going to click on coffee, and this is the eighth option down um, once the list expands. And this could change um, simply anytime we add a new category there, it may get pushed down or up. But at this point, um, you're going to click on the coffee link on the screen that you're looking at, it's circled for archived webinars. Um, 
now one of the reasons why it's it's there for archive webinars is because that's where all of our recordings are. So if you want additional information on coffee more than what I'm providing you, because again, this webinar is for uh, Budgeting 101, but I recently did an introduction to coffee webinar that goes over the site in more detail. If you want to see that, you will go to the archived webinars um, from services and resources, and there'll be a list of all of our recordings that we've done in the past. Once you click on the coffee link um, and you register, which is free by the way, you can access the many features that coffee has to offer. Um, one tool I found particularly interesting and great for tonight's webinar um, is the heading titled Count Your Beans. Now the reason why I found this interesting is because I was just having you go through how to create a budget and I was saying that you would need a calculator and to get all of your information together. Well, this section has budgeting tools and information to assist you in understanding your credit, debt management, as well as banking basics. You would simply hover over the Count Your Beans section, and just like you did from the LAPFCU uh, homepage when you selected coffee, you would simply click on the option titled Build a Budget. And again, we were just asking, I was just going over our calculation tool. So let me show you exactly what uh, tool Coffee has to offer. So from worksheets to quizzes, this is a great tool to track spending, as well as retrain the brain on better ways to manage your finances. Um, you would simply input your income source and select Add Income to generate your monthly growth. Now, I remember earlier I said that when you want to tally up your income, you want to look at the net. Well, this chart does not subtract any incomes and deductions because you are entering it yourself. So for the purpose of a true calculation, input your net income, as we discussed earlier. Even though the system um, may tell you to input your gross, you're going to go ahead and enter your net income so that you get a truer calculation. Okay. Once you have added your income sources, you will be prompted to input your expenses. Now, there are three types of expenses. You have your fixed, flexible, and discretionary. We start off with our fixed expenses because these are expenses that you pay every month that do not change. So, for example, your mortgage your rent, if you have a car loan, even child care, if you're paying this on a monthly, these are normally things that do not change. Once you select or input all of your monthly expenses, you are simply going to add up your expenses. So you'll select Add and generate your fixed expenses total. And then you'll click Next, which will then take you to the next expense worksheet. Now, flexible expenses might be considered a necessity. Um, however, the amount can change on a month-to-month -month basis. So, for example, take your utility bill. It is something you need. However, the amount of power used determines the usage, which in turn affects the total due for that month. So expenses like groceries, um, gas for your car, um, even your cable can fluctuate based on the amount of usage, if you're ordering movies, if you're taking a longer trip. And just like the previous screen, once all of the flexible expenses are entered, you would simply click Add Expenses to display your total, and then click Next to access the final worksheet. And this would be your discretionary expenses. Now, I don't know about you, but so far, I prefer inputting my information rather than using a calculator. But for those of you 
um, that like to be more hands-on. Again, um, I'm going to also go over the calculation um, again a little bit later, but you're more than welcome to do this on your own. Um, but this is a nice tool for either for you to check what you already input or for um, you to have the system to do all that for you as well and give you a nice visual. Now, similar to the flexible expenses, discretionary expenses can also change. Um, the biggest difference between the two is that flexible items are considered a necessity that can fluctuate while discretionary expenses tend to include items that we can do without if we need it to. So for example, uh, going out to the movies every month. It sounds fun to do. I personally would love to do that, but do you really need to go to the movies every month? Um, this sheet is utilized for those items that come up that we would like to make time for, uh, whether it whether you like going to the bar with friends, shopping for clothes, sporting events, traveling, um, all of the fun stuff. Okay, so once you enter all of the fun stuff, um, you can then add up those expenses and also hit submit. So you've entered all of your expenses, you entered your income. Once all of the monies have been entered, um, and you hit submit, you will find a footprint of your current budgeting strategy. And it will appear like it is on the screen now. And this is great because it displays a breakdown of percentages for the categories you entered. So for me, I, I just kind of played around with this, put in some numbers. And in this example, you will notice that almost 51% of my income is spent on housing. Okay, So whether that's your mortgage or your rent. Um, there is not much I can do in this area. Um, I can snip, however, from my personal section, which I happen to know contains my daily Starbucks run. And yes, I do have a guilty pleasure of purchasing my Venti Caramel Macchiato Hot with Soy upside down at the cost of $5.55. Please do not judge me. <laughs> I could also cut back on purchasing clothing um, because m most of the clothing, the clothes shopping that I do is spur the moment purchases and not a true necessity. Um, using your question box, let's go ahead and do an activity here. Using your question box, type in some areas you feel you could cut back on to reduce spending. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of a lot of different things here. I have uh, eating out, so there's a lot of food, dining out, um, clothing, um, things of like that. So for for eating out, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get and get rid of some of these. Let's see, financial gifts to others. I'd like to be your friend. Okay, so eating out, dining, um, buying gifts for other people. Okay, now before I go over some suggestions I have. Um, just take a moment, and what do you think you could do differently in order to save money in that category? Okay. Eat at home, perfect. Let's see, eating out, miscellaneous purchases, less trips, okay. So definitely for those of you that put eating out or dining out, um, packing a lunch, making a dinner, it's definitely cheaper. Um, yes, you may do more grocery shopping, but in the long run, it's definitely cheaper. Um, shop at thrift stores. That's definitely um, a good one for those that are into uh, shopping and doing things. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, comparison shopping a little bit later, but I'm glad that you're all getting your mind you know, working on some different things that you can do. And does it, can someone else put designate a maximum amount per month, and we're definitely going to talk about that too, so good thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all of your questions at this time, or all of your responses. And okay, and now we're going to talk a little bit about tracking and documenting, because you all have some very good ideas. So creating a budget uh, depends heavily on how you track and document your monies. 
be it your fixed, flexible, or discretionary expenses. Keeping a record of these items is probably the best way to find out exactly where your money is going. Not to mention, you start to become aware of your spending habits. So when I gave that example of how much I spend on a cup of coffee, that's not something that I would have known um, and, until I actually started budgeting and looking at why don't I have enough money to go and take this trip. You know, by saving um, from buying my coffee, and I buy it twice a day, by the way, I could easily save $300 a month and add that up for me to, because I do that every day, so that I could actually take my trip. Um, so there's a couple of things that we need to kind of look at. So take the calendar method, for example. Okay, The calendar method, how many of you, by a show of hands, have ever heard of the calendar method? Okay, at least one person. And this helps me because it lets me know, like, how much I need to say about it. Okay, so the calendar method, for example, um, this is where you would simply write down the due date on a calendar when each bill arrives. So when your bills come in, you take out your little handy-dandy um, um, calendar and you write down the uh, due date. When you receive your income, then you pay the bills that are due the soonest because you're going to look at that calendar and you're going to pay the bill that comes in the soonest. This is a great way not only to stay aware of your spending habits, it also provides a visual of when you not only get paid but when your bills are due. So it's a good eye-opener um, for you as well. Again, you want to make sure that you record all of your expenses. And then once you do that, you're going to subtract the total expenses from the total income due. Now, we talked about this already um, as far as like the positive and the negative number. Um, but again, I want to kind of revisit it just for a moment because when you're calculating this and you come up with a positive, I don't want you to just stop there. Um, you should always double check your information to ensure you haven't left anything out. So yes, you came up with a positive number. Um, great. Did you incorporate an emergency fund? Okay. Do you have money saved for future goals? So you need to make sure that we incorporate that as well because then that will tell you if you truly do have a positive. Now, if you, if you still do, great. Again, you're living within your means. You're doing a good job on saving for your future. If your answer is no, um, that you didn't incorporate those additional items, then recalculate subtract your new total expense amount from the total monthly income, and then again, see if it's still positive. Um, if it comes out positive, again, great. If not, and it comes out a negative, you will need to either increase the amount of income that's coming in, which for a lot of us is probably not the easiest thing to do. Um, a lot of us, you may get your, uh, your bonuses and your increase on a yearly, so what are you going to do in the, in the meantime? And the other thing that you can do is decrease the number of expenses or a combination of both, okay? Whether it's to get um, side jobs, any type of side income, or, um, you know, decreasing, again, some of those expenses that you have. And I tend to go to my discretionary expenses first because, again, remember, those are items that I technically can do without, even though it's the fun stuff. It's definitely not something that I need to do every month. Okay. At this time, I would like you to use the question or chat box to answer the following question. What current type of cash management system are you using? So what are you currently using to manage your cash? And go ahead and type that in the question pane. <laughs> yes, people have cash. And one of the one of the participants put cash. People have cash. Um, None Excel. Okay. Okay. So it seems like um, most of you aren't aren't using anything uh, to manage your cash. Um, there's a few people that have Excel. And let's see, uh, checkbooks. 
the calendar method. There's one person who didn't realize it, but they're actually using the cap calendar method um, online in bill pay. Um, the reason why I asked you this is because Again, I'm just going to keep stressing this to you. Remember, Coffee has um, that site. They also have free financial coaches uh, ready to assist you with your general budgeting concerns, as well as a multitude of money management tools. Um, and this is, again, to help you stay on track. So I went over the Build a Budget tool, but they have a wealth of tools um, that are located um, within, their, within their site. Um, you can also download an Excel worksheet. I have a couple people on here that said uh, that they are currently using Excel. Um, for those of you that do not know where to find one in Excel, you would simply open up Excel from your computer, um, type in the word budget planner in the search bar, and it will open up a bunch of different Excel applications that you can download or save to a CD. It's up to you or simply download it to your computer. Um, I understand that tough habits are hard to break for those that are that on the line and they like to write everything out. They don't want to use a computer for anything because some people are afraid that they're going to lose it or someone's going to hack in and find all their information. Um, there's also um, the envelope budgeting system. Um, show of hands, how many of you have heard of the envelope budgeting? Okay, a couple of hands going up. Okay, not too many. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain what the envelope budgeting system is. Um, this is basically when you divide your money into categories and assign each category an envelope. So um, you have one envelope that says budget. Um, excuse me, one envelope that says mortgage, one envelope that says utilities, one envelope that says child care. Okay, so you divide everything into different envelopes. You just have your, your envelopes labeled. A set amount based on your calculation, so you come up with how much you're going to spend for each category. Okay, and what you're going to do is you place that amount into an envelope. And you pull it as needed for this category. When the envelope is empty, you are not spending any more money in that category. Okay, That's more of a hands-on thing. A lot of us don't tend to carry cash on us as much. I mean, my card is my, my best friend. But it's definitely a way for you to kind of get a visual and really see how much you're spending. Because we have that card, we kind of forget to you know, to actually go through our our budgeting regimen, and you know, we forget all the things that we said we were going to do. So this is a very good visual as an eye opener, just to get you to see how much you're actually spending. Set a budget, put it in that envelope, and after that amount is paid, that's it. No more till next month for for that um, area. Um, a lot of other people use a budgeting planner. Um, this is simply used to store your receipts and writing all income and expenses out. Um, but what you can also make sure you put a category in for debt tracking. Um, a lot of times when people get extra income and now they do have a surplus, they forget to pay towards that debt as well. And again, remember I stated this in the beginning, if you're not paying anything towards your debt, all you're doing is um, increasing uh, your your bad habits and having bad credit. Okay. Budgeting takes time and patience and it is an ongoing process. Um, you would need to monitor your progress monthly and make changes as they become necessary. So for example, if if I have any expected um, expecting parents on the phone, they will want to budget for upcoming expenses like diapers. Um, they're extremely expensive, and it seems like your child is never dry. Um, daycare, um, anything like that. And for those of you experiencing a decrease in the number of family members, it could be that a child went off to um, college or got married or you know, unfortunately the passing of a loved one. You may need to remove certain items that were part of your initial budget. 
So it's important for you to stay on track and make the necessary changes as they occur because your budget doesn't stay the same um, throughout the rest of your life. Things will change that. And as you meet your goals and you take off a certain goal, then also, again, make the changes to your budget. And we need to keep our eyes open out for deals. So a little earlier I asked you, how could you uh, save money? What are some of the things that we are spending on and how can we better save? Um, by a show of hands, do I have any coupon shoppers online? OK, a couple, a couple. OK, so. Businesses are someone put I want to be. I want to be too. Um, I'm just haven't gotten around to doing that as much as I want to do it. Um, businesses are in competition for your funds. Um, never buy the first item that you see. Always shop around, search the internet, um, look for grocery items that are store brand versus name brand. Um, I actually learn that uh, the hard way. Some things, I know if you're a really, really good cook, there's certain things that you just have to have that brand, but for the most part. Um, again, really try to look for the store brand. Store brand ketchup is just as good as the name brand ketchup, trust me. Um, make lunch or dinner versus eating out. We talked about that. Um, for those of you that like to go out to the movies and things like that, Order a movie at home for one price versus taking the entire family out to the theater. Have a family night at home. Find a nice movie that's on that's on demand or on Netflix or whatever type of uh, program that you're watching, and make it a family night. Um, that one price it's usually what about anywhere between four ninety nine, five ninety nine in comparison to how much one ticket costs for you to go to the movie. So these are some things that you can do as well. Um, if you're a coffee drinker, like myself, um, opt to make your own versus buying. And if you would rather buy, because you're not good at making coffee, because I'm not good at making coffee, um, look for more affordable options. The dollar cup of coffee at 7-Eleven um, actually tastes pretty good, or the coffee at McDonald's um, versus my specialty coffee for $5.55. These are definitely some things and some options that you can look at in order for you to uh, save some money. For those of you that were talking about eating out, um, fine dining versus family restaurants. You know, there's family restaurants that are a lot cheaper. Um, the food is still good. And you can go to a family restaurant versus going to fine dining. And every once in a while, treat yourself. But don't um, try to do more than your pocket can actually afford, OK? So in summary with everything, um, by determining your net worth, as well as creating a workable budget that you can take control of your financial future, you need to remember that you will need to monitor your progress and make changes when they occur. Um, you should always be mindful of your income and expenses and manage them on a monthly basis. Um, comparison shopping whenever possible because, again, those pennies turn into dollars. And you, know, you may not think it's a lot in the beginning, um, but definitely when you start calculating how much you spend a month and look at your total for the year and how much you spend, you will be so surprised at how much money you're actually um, saving um, just by taking away some of those items that are really not a necessity. Okay. Now, as I promised earlier, um, this is a one-hour webinar um, that does include questions as well. And I have a couple of other things to talk to you all about. But before I do that, um, let me see if there are any questions that people have at this time. And if you do have one, just simply type in your question in the question pane. 
but um, raise your hand so that I know that there are some pending questions that are out there. Okay, so if you're in the process of typing a question, simply raise your hand so I'm aware of the pending question that you're entering. Okay, so my first question is, when is a personal loan or debt consolidation a good idea? Very good question. Um, a, whether you need a personal loan or debt consolidation, I would honestly say to you that this is a really good question for uh, coffee. And the reason why is they have uh, tons of professional uh, people who actually deal with this on a daily basis. And it's free, by the way, um, just to talk to them. I would say that if you are really underwater and you want to, and, and even if you're not, but you're kind of thinking that you want to get a, uh, you want to get ahead of the game, you kind of know that you're you're really struggling a little bit, or you feel that you will be soon. Whether it was um, a pending uh, notice of layoffs, um, I was laid off, or whatever. Before I know people who have been, or whether it's um, you just have an emergency that came up and you're pulling out of your, your accounts and you may need to kind of consolidate for better rates. Um, that's definitely a good reason to consolidate your debt is if you have a card that has a better rate. Um, let's see, 550 times 360 for coffee. Oh, 2000 a year for coffee. Yeah, um, someone put that, yes. Two thousand, two thousand a year for coffee. It's 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 a lot. I don't think I'm spending two thousand a year for coffee, but I'm I'm up there. Um, let's see some other questions that I have. I feel like budgeting planning is overwhelming. Any tips on how to overcome this? Um, my biggest tip I think would be to breathe. Um, it is a lot of planning, but you need to start off with the basic steps. If you can gather all of your uh, your expenses that you have on a monthly basis, and just take some time, um, whatever relaxes you. Everyone's different, so do it. Of course, when you're relaxed, please don't do it when you're when you're stressed, because again, like you said, it's already overwhelming. Um, just to do something when you're in a good mood, whether it is listening to your favorite music or doing it on a nice sunny day, um, opening up your windows when it looks nice outside and just kind of sit down and say, I'm going to do this today. I really don't have a lot of tips on how to make it less overwhelming. Um, definitely, once you get started with the process, um, you will see that it's not as complicated to start a budgeting process um, once you get started with that. And let's see. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much um, for, for that. It's really like on a case-by-case -case per individual. So if you talk to someone at um, the credit union or at coffee, um, that would definitely help. And again, when I hand out the survey, which will be emailed to everyone, when I hand out the, when the survey comes into your email, if you put down your contact information and you would like to have someone contact you regarding specifics on whether it's debt consolidation or anything, um, it's, you know, it's really just a one step at a time, uh, break it up into pieces and kind of start by building an emergency fund and start from there. Okay. Let's see. Will coffee recommend how much one should spend on a mortgage, home utilities, groceries, etc.? Really, really good question. Um, coffee will, will provide um, a lot of their basic information. However, they also do actually set up um, consolidating credit cards and everything um, with members. And that's really on a case-by-case -case basis. It is, I believe, $69 to set that up if you wanted them to actually manage your debt for you. And then um, there may or may not be a monthly fee depending on your income. So they could talk to you regarding that. Um, but yes, they will recommend and make some recommendations um, for you if you actually want them to manage your debt. If you're trying to understand um, 
the situation a little bit more, that service is free. I mean, they'll go over your um, they'll go over your credit statements uh, with you. They will talk to you and give you some really good tips. But if you actually want them to manage the debt for you, then that's when they would actually charge a fee. Um, the next question is, what is the average percentage of your income? Should you? What's the average percentage of your income? Should you be saving? People save for a down payment for a house. So let's see. The average percentage of your income that people should be saving, it depends on the person and the house. Um, it's, it's not, it's, I understand your question, but again, it really does depend on the person and the house um, because you may not need to save as much. Um, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken, like 20 percent, let's see, it depends on, because let's see, lenders will look at the debt to income ratio um, to qualify you, okay? So they'll look at how much debt you have versus the income that you have coming in. And then based on that, they'll let you know how much they can loan you. So again, that's why it really does depend on that. Um, it also is based on how much you want to borrow, the type of loan, the rate you qualify for. So I wish I can give you more information on that. However, I will take your question and if you would like to, when I send out the survey, if you'd like to talk to someone in our lending uh, department that can give more information, I could definitely do that as well. Also, Coffee does also talk to first-time home buyers. I'm not sure if you're a first-time home buyer or not. You can respond and let me know, and uh, and then that way it'll give me an idea as well. Okay, let's see. I have several automatic deductions coming from my checking account to pay various bills. Is this a good method? when keeping a budget. Okay, well is it is it working for you? For the, the person that actually put that, is it working for you by having the several automatic deductions? Um, as long as it's working for you, that's perfectly fine. A lot of people use their online bill pay and everything for them. It takes it out for you, but it's not actually budgeting um, for you. Um, let's see, to pay is a good method. Yeah, it's not really budgeting for you. I mean, you're, you're paying your bills on time, but do you know how much money you have coming in? So online bill pay and a budgeting system are different. Um, again, if you're looking for more, uh, you're looking for more concrete information on what your net worth is, online bill pay is not going to tell you that. Again, you would need to input what your income is versus the expenses you have coming out. Online bill pay is only going to calculate what you what you spend. It doesn't know that um, how much money you have coming in. So if you don't have all your money coming into the bank, you might not see that. And again, um, it just depends on whether or not it gives you any type of graph or anything to see where you're spending. But it's not going to help you it's not going to help you budget. It's not going to stop you from spending the money or give you an example of where you're spending your money at. I hope that answered your question. Um, please let me know if it didn't as I'm, I'm going through the questions at this time. Um, let's see, does the credit union offer consolidated loans? Let's see, can credit union offer consolidated um, loans and for the Police Federal Credit Union, um, we can refi your loan, so yes. Can you please explain again how to access coffee? You can access coffee from our webpage, from lapfcu.org, and I also will actually bring that up again in just a moment. You can also access them from their URL address, which I'll show directly after the Q&A session. Um, from our website, um, you would simply go to services and resources from our homepage, and then you'll click on coffee, and it'll take you to the coffee site, and from there you would simply input your username and password. Um, you'll create one, it's, a, it's free for, for you to um, access that site, just create a username and password that is unique to you, and you'll have access immediately after upon doing that. 
Um, for more information on the coffee site, again, I do have a recorded um, session um, that's on our site as well under services and resources, and it's under um, archived webinars, and you would go there, and then you'll have a list of them. And it should be the first one that you see, Introduction to Coffee. Um, and then for the person who asked about um, consolidating for um, LAPFCU, I just want to stress that we have all types of loans that can consolidate um, your uh, um, any of your funds. Okay, this is probably off subject, but let's see. But since this is being recorded, does that mean you will email the entire webinar to us to go over again if we need to? or at least the PowerPoint portion of it. Um, yes, yeah, since it's being recorded, you will get a link to the recording. So you'll be able to watch the recording in its entirety, including this question portion that I am going over as well. You'll be able to pause it, um, to take notes if you want to, but yes, you will have the link to the entire um, recording, and that usually goes out within two business days following the presentation. I have time for one more question, and then um, I'll, I'll tell you how I'll answer the rest of your questions, because I'm not going to leave any of your questions unanswered, although unfortunately I won't be able to answer all of them in the essence of time for this presentation. Um, let's see, where's my next question? Can you recommend a good budgeting application? Yes, I can, coffee. So you can go to our coffee website, and that's definitely a good application. I don't know if you've used it before yet, but give it a try. Um, it, again, it has tons of um, interactive tools. You have uh, webinars. They also have webinars on there. They also have links to other budgeting sites um, with the latest news and resources as well. And they also give webinars outside of uh, the credit union on budgeting tools, and they'll tell you what time and that you can join their webinars as well. They also have publications that you can download in PDF form, as well as when you put in your calculations, you are able to print that out, and it'll also give you a graph of everything as well. Okay. At this point of the webinar, I did answer, um, I went over most of the questions. Um, fortunately for time, I can't go over every single one. Um, if you have any additional uh, questions or, or concerns, as a reminder, I want to make sure to make sh that you have the coffee website from the LAPFCU homepage. Um, however, you can also access directly from their URL address, which you have on your screen. And this, their address is for uh, LAPFCU uh, members. It's completely for us, the site that you're going to. Um, also, LAPFCU, our toll-free number is there if you have any additional membership concerns. There is also the Introduction to Coffee recorded webinar session. Again, I want to stress that as well for those wanting additional information on its services, and I do recommend taking a look. Um, for the financial coaching portion, um, Again, the coaches for coffee are free and available to assist you with questions on how to not only pull and understand your credit report, but budgeting. They can also provide tips on how to start getting back on track. They also provide assistance for more complex situations like, and a couple of you asked about this, consolidating credit cards and negotiating lower uh, interest rates with creditors. There is a one-time setup fee of the $69 if you wish for someone to manage your debt and negotiate on your behalf, and a monthly service charge may or may not apply depending on your income. Again, however, there is no fee, and I do want to stress, no fee to talk to a coach and obtain tips and gain some understanding. So there's no fee for that whatsoever. The time fee, the time frames listed um, on your screen are in Pacific Standard Time. East Coast times would be Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday, they would be open for East Coast times, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. However, again, the times on your screen are for Pacific Standard Time. Although they do take calls on Sunday, members are unable to schedule an appointment on this day, so that's why it says that it is uh, no appointments for that day. 
As a reminder, this webinar was recorded and will be provided along with a survey link via email. Please provide your feedback and let us know what you thought of tonight's presentation. The survey also contains an area for you to leave your contact information if you would like to have a financial coach reach out to you or simply set up a username and password to Coffee website and obtain the information on your own. Whatever is easier for you, um, we're here to help you, so we definitely want to make sure that uh, we, we get you in the right path. Okay. We at the Credit Union realize that your time is valuable, and it is our hope that you enjoy tonight's presentation. Until next time, thank you and have a good night.